The JG Maker Artist D, which is the printer you can see behind me, is an IDEX printer. Now, IDEX stands for Independent Dual Extruders, and IDEX printers can do two color prints, very clean two color prints, and they can also do two prints simultaneously by means of the fact that they have two extruders that can move independently of one another on the X axis. Now, they're typically quite expensive, but this one costs only $389. I'm Ian Buckley and this is Make Use of Reviews and today we're going to find out whether this printer can do expensive things for way cheaper than you'd expect. So before getting into the review, a couple of quick points. Firstly, why should you trust what I think about printers? Well, long before I started writing about anything to do with maker culture, I was a, a maker. Um, I, at the time I lived in a tiny one bedroom flat, I had neither the time nor the space to buy have, or use my own 3D printers, so it pushed me into local maker spaces and under the wing of people that have been using 3D printers for a very long time. So uh, some of their expertise rubbed off on me, and I am by no means an expert, but it did mean that when I started getting my hands on my own FDM and resin printers, there was a few things that I already sort of had run into and had been taken through by people who were more experienced by me. So I reiterate, I'm by no means an expert, but I think I know enough about 3D printers to review them fairly. The other thing you should be aware of is that this is a Kickstarter product. The initial price of $389 is the super early bird price on Kickstarter and it is still available. Now, as with all Kickstarters, you should be slightly wary because Kickstarter is the place where a lot of people have been scammed in the past. However, JG Maker are a very reputable 3D printer company and I have no reason to think there is anything wrong with this Kickstarter. Um, the initial backers are still waiting for their printers, but I mean, it, look, it, it, it's here, it, it's a printer and it works. But how well it works is the focus of this review. So let's get into it. So the general frame of this printer is similar to most other 3D printers you will find. The Z and the Y axis are the same as normal. You have the build plate that moves and it can move up and down. Where it varies is in the X axis here because there are two extruders, so there are two belts driving them. Now most IDEX printers are only actually independent in one axis and that is this X axis. Um, that's where they're so good at tax tasks like uh, duplicating and mirroring things uh, because yeah, um, it, this will always be the same movement and the up and down will always be the same movement when you're making models that are either the same or mirrored. Now accuracy is of course very important to get good 3D prints out of a printer and the Z axis screws on this printer have a claimed accuracy of 0.001 millimeters. The build area on this printer is 310 by 310 by 350 millimeters, which is pretty generous. And the composite build plate is removable and magnetic. Um, just a little point, this build plate is actually uh, one of my favorite ones that I've used. Um, having said that, if anything, it's a little bit too sticky. Uh, I know that sounds weird because you want a build plate to be stickier than you do want it not to be. But despite its stickiness, I still run into some issues, which we'll get into later. In terms of filament feeding, obviously the two rolls go up here on the top. They come down through these filament runout sensors that will automatically cut the printer off if it senses you have run out of filament, and they go straight into the extruder bodies, which is nice. There's no clogged Bowden tubes happening here. Also, each one of the independent extruders has a home location at the side with a little wire brush and catcher for catching any uh, filament that's left on the end of the nozzle, which is a nice little touch. Now the LCD screen on this printer is controlled by a rotary encoder, which is quite standard for printers like this, and it has a very strong blue backlight, something that didn't particularly bother me and probably wouldn't bother you unless you had this printer set up in your bedroom. Uh, why? And the firmware the printer ships with is the Bugfix 2.0 version of Marlin. Other than that, the extruders are direct drive, the max nozzle temperature is 245 Celsius and the max heated bed temperature is 60 Celsius. It is capable of printing everything really, PLA, ABS, uh, TPU and uh, even apparently uh, PETG, um, but I hadn't had any luck with PETG printing. However, that's probably on me. Um, I struggle with PETG printing in general. Like many 3D printers, the JG Maker Artist D comes pre-assembled. And in this case, pre-assembly means that the base comes as one unit and the arch comes as another, and it is up to you to put them together and wire it up. And that is a relatively simple process. It took maybe less than half an hour. And usefully, uh, JG Maker have labeled every single uh, cable and place where the cables go. It is very, very difficult to wire this printer up wrong. As for the cabling itself, I am actually quite a fan of these ribbon cables. I feel like it's a very good way of having a cable that is going to move backwards and forwards a lot. Um, they look quite flimsy, but it's incredibly difficult to kink them. Um, and since they are sort of rigid in their own sort of flexible way, that's a sentence that doesn't make any sense, um, they don't really get in the way. At no point when I was using this printer did I ever think there was going to be any issue with these, and I certainly never noticed them getting tight um, or getting into positions that they shouldn't. Um, I'm actually quite a fan of this design in general. 
The Artist D also came with two rolls of test filament. And when I say rolls of test filament, I don't mean this just enough for a test print malarkey that you get with most printers. I mean actual full, albeit small, rolls of test filament, which is quite nice. Um, I didn't end up using it. I can't give any uh, quality assurance on it because I use the same uh, filament for every test to make it fair. Um, but again, uh, with a lot of 3D printers that will give you just one little spindly thing, just enough to cough out a test print, um, I thought that was quite a nice and generous thing. So getting set up for your first print involves leveling the bed and leveling the bed is a fairly standard affair. You have these uh, spring mounted screws, hand screws on the bottom here that you can use for pushing up each part of the bed. And there is a menu setting for moving extruder number one around all of these different parts. It only does it with extruder number one, however, and that turned out to be quite important. Once the bed is leveled, you simply choose the preheat PLA option from the menu, and then you can run your filament down from the spool through the sensor and straight into the top of the extruder, pushing it in until some comes out from the bottom here. Speaking of the nozzle, this is a good time to probably mention one of the main features of the Artist D, which is these hot swappable nozzles that you can easily swap out just by pressing a button and pulling the nozzle out. Now you may notice that I'm not actually doing that right now, it's not quite as simple as they make it look in the promotional videos, but uh, to their credit, these little replaceable nozzles are quite cool little ideas. Um, now, as you can see, there's a, a detent on this, which makes it look like it should clip in. Now, in my experience, that did not happen. Um, but the idea of being able to swap nozzles out quite quickly is quite an innovative one, and one that I'm sure a lot of people will welcome. Now, for test printing, JG Maker provides some STL files on the SD card that comes with the printer, and they also provide a version of Cura that you can use. Now, I didn't use the version of Cura that they sent. I have a version of Cura that I use. Um, I have switched between versions of Cura many, many times, and I haven't really noticed any obvious difference the software has made. I'm willing to admit that I am wrong, but I do not think that any problems I run into had to do with my version of Cura. And uh, yeah, my first test print of this little money cat fellow uh, turned out absolutely fine. This single color print and this dual color cone both use the printer's auto park feature. That's what you're gonna be using for all single color prints that use one extruder or all two color prints that are making one model but using both extruders. Mirror mode and duplication mode work in a surprisingly simple way. Um, what JG Maker suggests you do is put the model into Cura and then move it 80 to the left. That means that when you slice the model and you put it onto the printer, it would print in this position if it was only printing a simple model. But then once it is loaded into the printer, you change it into either mirror or duplication mode and it will print another one on the other side of the build plate. Now I'm sure some people will miss being able to specify all this stuff in software. For me, it wasn't particularly an issue. Um, I tend to like being hands-on with my 3D printers. Um, but yeah, I fully understand if you want to specify that in software, you will be missing that. Um, one thing I didn't test is what happens if the model you specify to duplicate is wider than half of the build plate. I don't know if there are any safeguards in place for that. I didn't find out. That said, perhaps if you try to print something whose combined width is wider than the base plate of your 3D printer, it probably should go wrong. JG Maker provide an STL for a calibration block, which is a fancy word for sort of two Tetris blocks stacked on top of each other. The idea is you print this uh, in two colors and then you measure with calipers the offset. Uh, you then put that offset into the printer and it is remembered in software so that the next time you print a calibration block, it sits perfectly on top of each other. Now this may sound like a fairly primitive way of doing this, but to be perfectly honest, for something that's calibrated in a factory thousands and thousands of miles away and then sent across the world, what do you do if something slips? How do you calibrate it? This seems like a fairly foolproof way of doing so. So the initial setup of this printer was easy. The test print was good. Now, when I started moving into things like duplication and mirror printing, I did start to run into some issues. Um, I didn't 100% diagnose even what these issues were. One problem for absolutely sure is that these quick release nozzles, while a great idea in principle, um, mean that the actual height between the two extruders can be ever so slightly different. And as you know, precision is very important with a 3D printer. And as I mentioned earlier in this review, when you level the build plate, you level it with extruder number one. There is no simple way to level it with extruder number two, other than getting both of them down to build level, turning off the stepper motors and moving it around. When I did that, I noticed there was definite discrepancies in the height between the two extruders. But before we even get into that, um, one of the weirder things that I noticed as well is that I would get weird weak points on my prints. Um, now that is typically not necessarily to do with wrong extruder heights. Uh, wrong extruder heights usually make prints fail at the very, very start. Whereas uh, this test block that I have here uh, failed not even on its first level, it failed after its uh, first level, and there was a definite weak point running all the way through it. Um, I, the same filament I used for these test block prints was absolutely fine for various other things. There's no problem there. Um, that was a really strange one that I never quite got my head around. 
Now the quick release nozzles mentioned earlier in this review are one of the main draws of this printer. In principle they're a fantastic idea, in practice unfortunately they caused a lot more problems than they solved. The promotional material for this printer shows someone simply pressing a button and pulling out the filament nozzle. I suspect that was done on a printer that has never been used, because once you've used this printer there is filament in the extruder and stuck in the nozzle end. The way you get that out is of course by heating it up and then pulling the filament out. So sure, you could just leave that to cool down again, but then that filament has dried again and the nozzle is stuck in there. In reality, what you need to do is heat the nozzle up, press the button in and pull it out with a set of pliers and then spend a long time cleaning it, but you can't spend too long cleaning it because it's already cooling down. So the other thing you can do is turn it on and clean the nozzle before you pull it off, but that doesn't clean off the filament that's stuck on the nozzle on the inside. I at one point decided just to see if there was a height discrepancy between the nozzles, I would just swap them. I thought that can't be too hard. I heated both of them up, I pulled the filament out, I pulled both the nozzles out, I cleaned the extruders the best that I could, and then I swapped the nozzles around. I couldn't even get one of them back into the other side because of the filament that had dried on the nozzle. Short of cracking out a blowtorch and getting it off that way, I couldn't really think of anything other than just sitting and scraping each piece of filament off the end of the nozzle. I don't see how this is in any way easier than your simple usual uh, screw on nozzles. So unfortunately I did not have a great experience with these nozzles. Um, not only were they a pain to clean, um, a couple of times I found that for whatever reason, even when the bottom of the nozzle wasn't blocked, um, a filament would actually push up over the top of the nozzle um, and then melt the filament at the top and snap it out of the extruder. Um, now I don't watch other reviews of things when I'm writing my scripts for my reviews and doing my reviews, I think that's unfair, but um, I do tend to check reviews when my script is finished, um, just out of interest more than anything and to see if other people thought the same thing as I did. Um, and just before I filmed this I looked up other uh, reviews of the Artist D and no one else seems to be mentioning this. I don't know if I am unlucky, I don't know if this is down to my lack of expertise, but um, yeah, it, there's never been a 3D printer that has caused this much trouble with nozzles for me and you know how much nozzles can cause trouble in 3D printers. So yeah, just that's the biggest takeaway for this review for me is that uh, this printer is close to being great and unfortunately one of the features that they really push to make it seem really really good is one of the ones that was a big problem for me. That said, there's a lot of very good things about this printer as well. The build plate, as I mentioned, is incredibly grippy, and that's a good thing. It really is. You do not want your build plate to be so loose that nothing will stick to it. And whenever I had failed prints on this build plate, I think it was more to do with the discrepancy in extruder heights in two colour prints than anything else. All of my single colour prints with this printer have come out perfectly, and despite having many, many problems with it, there's been a few duplication and mirror prints that came out all right. The problem is, if I'm going to be using duplication and mirror printing, um, you know, one of the main things that this is pushed towards uh, is saying, hey, if you're a, a maker who uses 3D printers for, say, your Etsy store, you can do two things at once. Yes, but you need consistency as well, something I didn't get. Now the build plate on this printer did have a problem I have noticed on other budget 3D printers and that is that the build plate in the center is a different height to the build plate in the four corners. Um, in this particular case, when these four corners were uh, perfectly leveled, the middle was way too high. Um, now, I do know that some manufacturers claim that the build plate is warped uh, on purpose so that when it heats up it goes flat. I have no idea of the validity of these claims. Um, I know there's a couple of other things that can cause it. Um, regardless, it is not a problem if you're not printing big models. Um, the biggest model I think I printed was probably around a 10 centimeter diameter um, uh, and there wasn't any issue there whatsoever. That said, if you're going to be using this for printing very big models, that might be an issue that you run into. You may want to replace the stock build plate with a piece of glass or something like that. So, in summary, the JG Maker Artist D is almost a phenomenal IDEX printer, and the $389 price tag is not what lets it down, actually. For me, it is these nozzles. They are more irritation than innovation for me. I may be the only person that has had this problem. I will concede that. However, if you want an IDEX printer that just works straight out of the box, you need to be spending at least twice this probably more. Um, if you want an IDEX printer that is incredibly cheap to work on over some time to mod and to get working perfectly, this is the best IDEX printer you can buy for cheap. Just don't expect it to work straight out of the box. I hope this review is of some use to you and if you had questions about the RSD, I have answered at least some of them. If I've missed anything, feel free to ask questions in the comment section below. Um, I do really love this printer. It's a shame about those nozzles. Uh, with a little bit of modding, this would definitely be my favorite FDM printer. $389 for a dual extruder is an absolute steal. Anyway, uh, the review is over, but this is the Make Use of YouTube channel, and if you're not already subscribed to us, consider giving us a subscription. We have a large and varied review team putting out reviews of all kinds of stuff all the time. We also have several Tech Bytes news videos throughout the week, and occasionally still some tutorials and uh, some tech tips as well. But for now, I hope you're having a fantastic day. Take care.